Hey, 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 welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing a Q&A. So grab you a cup of tea or some coffee and let's get started. I had to get sipped, y'all. <laughs> I'm so glad that you're here today. We're like I said in my intro, we are doing a Q&A. It is my first. Um, I want to say thank you to all you mamas and friends who have went on my social media after I asked in my Insta stories. Um, if you would just ask me anything about mamahood, homeschool, and even my journey as a wife and anything you would want to know about me. And I also asked it in my last video and some of you took the time and messaged me, DM'd me, so I appreciate it. And I wanted to sit down and try to answer some of those questions for you. So yes, I am ready. First, are y'all loving this weather? I don't know where you are. I feel like all East Coast has been getting some rain, some snow, some all the things. Here in Texas, we literally go from a uh, hot, hot, hot summer to we get a week in fall to bam, it's 45 degrees in the morning. So <laughs> I am enjoying the weather. But yes, so let me go ahead and jump in. I want to answer as many questions as I possibly can. Uh, the first one I have here at the top is, what is your Enneagram number? Well, I am an Enneagram 8. And so I am not surprised about it. I'm an 8 with a wing 7, so also known as the Maverick, I guess. Uh, I will say if you see my face flustered or confused, it's because I don't marry myself to the Enneagram. Um, I no shame to anyone else who does. I just think it's a really cool tool if you want to know and you're, you know, want to check it out and, and uh, figure out, you know, it's like a personality test. And I, you know, I seem to circle myself with a lot of eights and fives sometime. Um, I have a few fives in my life, but overall, I just, I take it as a grain of salt. I'm not married to it. I don't identify myself entirely by it. I think that, um, you know, there's space and room for change and growth. And so even if you are at the core, a certain number, I think overall with life, you evolve. So it's probably a cool test to take in different stages of your life. But yes, I am an eight. Uh, the next question I have here is, um, oh, what is my favorite color? So someone wrote, I asked that question if anybody wanted to ask me that. So someone did and I answered them, but I want to answer it here. Uh, my favorite color is burnt orange. So fall is all the things for me. Um, I have really three colors. It's burnt orange, yellow, and purple. I love those three colors. Um, and yeah, so there's that. Uh, the next one is my favorite books. So I have three. Uh, first one, obviously, is the Bible. I've learned to really fall in love with the Bible and the Word of God and enjoying reading it. The second one is The Coldest Winter Ever. I read that in high school um, and by Sister Soldier, And I just, I haven't had the heart to read it again. <laughs> Like I read it in its entirety in such a slow pace in high school and it was in a certain pivotal part point in my life. Um, but it's still an all time like I'll never read anything like it again. And then the third one is uh, Swing Time by Zadie Smith. I love her. She is a just a phenomenal writer. Uh, I have loved enjoying a couple of her books. And so, yeah, those are my three. Uh, the next one, it was favorite. Um, what is it? The other one I had. Oh, no. Have you always wanted to be a stay at home mom? Uh, no. If you go back literally to the beginning of my channel, I kind of sat down and talked about how um, my plans versus God plans. Um, I'll link that here. It's been a minute since I had that video. I thought about that video. But basically, I went to school for fashion design. I thought I was going to go all the way. And so um, I've, I, I had great experiences. I got to do some phenomenal things in that industry before children. Um, but yeah, no, I didn't never really. I think I was that person that knew I wanted to be married. And I knew two kids, maybe four, because I don't like odd numbers, but you know, whatever God intends. Uh, but I wanted to just be in design. I wanted, I love conceptual design and it's just, I have a natural eye for it and putting things together. So that was what I wanted to do before becoming a stay at home mom. 
I've just learned to embrace um, that I can still use the gifts that I have with my children. And so there you are. Uh, next question. Do you have any go-tos for getting yourself excited again for homeschool post burnout? Yes, um, I actually have been seeing this a lot being messaged and posted on our on my social media with my peers and other moms on there, as well as some people doing some videos on it. And I would say I have three things. The first one, I call it reset, like a mama needs a reset because I really feel that that's important. Mom, you need a reset button. This is a lot. You are doing full-time mama, full-time home, full-time wife, full-time everything that under the sun. Um, and you easily can get burnt out. You can easily start to doubt yourself. And so I like to doubt my doubt, first of all. Um, and I will do that first. Like, I'm going to doubt my doubts. So I'm going to list down. I'm going to do some reflection time. And I'm going to list down the things that I am saying or I am feeling in this moment and then having to go back with it against truth. What is the truth? And it's like, cause I'll have days where I'm like, what, really, is this really what I'm supposed to do? Cause my temper didn't flared today. I didn't got loud and indignant with my kids cause they didn't got on my last nerve. And, um, and you know, it's just like, I, I don't wanna, I, I don't want this responsibility sometimes. Like this is a heavy responsibility for the, not only the education, but the molding of a human being. But God knew what he was doing when he gave us the opportunity to be their parents. And so I have to list what I'm saying and how I'm feeling, even when it's ugly and nasty. And then I have to go against it with truth and start writing, what is the truth of all this? So there's the first, just doubt my doubt, self-reflection. Another thing I do is simply, I will put a beat on all school if I have to. Um, if I'm dealing with too many attitudes, if I'm dealing with um, just shifts and things happening that I have no control over, like, you know, my daughter got sick, my oldest got sick last week, and I tried to do school for the first two days, and I was like, you know what? No, we're just going to pause it all. And so I'll take those breaks. That's the the joy and the honor of being a homeschooler. <laughs> Mom, I can just, or a stay-at-home mom, I can just say, no, we ain't doing none of this today. Um, and so, yeah, I've done that. I've put a beat on it. Maybe there needs to be some space to put everything down and let your kids be kids. And if they want to play, if they, they gently just, they'll gravitate to the things they want to do. And so you just encourage that and not try to do anything else about it. The other thing I will do is I will literally take my behind to a Target or anywhere, I don't care if I have to wear a face mask, I'm gonna go to Target and I'm gonna be gone for a couple hours because I don't, I'm not there for anything in particular. I might walk down every freaking aisle and you know, just not think about anything for a minute and just take a second and just, no shame, no shame, because I've done it. <laughs> um, another thing is, is really just uh, going back to what your intentions were when you started homeschool. I feel like that has been for me, like after every quarter, I have to go back like, what is the intention I set? So I'm gonna share that video here where I talked about uh, setting intentions for the year and what my intentions were and making sure I'm not veered all the way off of it because it's easy to do or to even say, you know what, I need to reset my intentions because what I was setting for that season may not be current for right now. Um, also just being in community, I've learned to, not try to hold on to everything myself, but create a space or allow myself space to talk to people and say, hey, are you going through this? Are you feeling this? I don't know what's going on, but I'm feeling this way. And, you know, I need to know, am I going crazy? And, you know, if you have a therapist or if you're like me, where I have a best friend who's that so happens to be a therapist and me and her can have these really deep conversations and like peel back the layers and figure out what's going on. Um, and also finding things that bring me joy for myself. So I don't, I'm not even knowing how many I've just listed, but I will do that. I will take some time for myself and, uh, just say, you know what, maybe I need to pick up painting again, or I need to pick up or uh, doing the things that brought me joy outside of just being the operator and COO of my home. Okay, so there's that. The next one, and I hope those helped you out. I may do a video that's a little bit more 
conducive or like com it's all come together that I can share with you. Maybe if you want to see something like that, leave it in the comments below where I could talk about it more. Um, my other one it says, I would love to know what, uh, what you are passionate about outside of motherhood and being a wife. Whew, let me get some tea, y'all. Thank you if you've been watching this far, by the way. <laughs> I would say it's kind of interesting because in my life now, I feel like everything still, no matter what, revolves around this motherhood and um, being a wife. And I'm working on a couple of things. God has given me... Um, He's given me some some things that he wants me to do. One of those was this channel. Another was to write a book about fear. And so I that is really almost like an autobiography of my life um, and how I have walked through fear in different stages of my life. And so I need to get started on that. I mean, I'm starting in tidbits. The other thing is creating a, um, I'm working on a site that's going to be going up live. Uh, I will be sharing that in a video this week, so please check that out. Um, I am building a site that is for mamas and it's supposed to be a safe space for all of us. I've been working on it for the past couple of months and so it's almost ready. And so that is, even though it's outside of motherhood, it's not, I mean, even though it is about mamahood, it's kind of outside of it because it's really just us having a space where I'm, it's like a blog. Uh, parts of it has a blog feature on it. And that blog part is different than kind of what I do on my Instagram. My Instagram is kind of a real time blog. So I'm posting what we do in a day or things like that. This is like just, you know, sparks of hope that is on my heart that I want to put down. So I'm working on that. Another thing that I'm really passionate about um, is creating uh, opportunities for other moms. And um, I've been trying to figure out what that looks like for the past couple of years. When I was doing fashion design, um, I had a, an entire business plan of a possibility of creating a space where I would be creating with mamas for mamas. And it would be ethically used um, clothing that would be manufactured where I would train and teach people how to fully sew the garment that are really mom sewing the garment at fair wages, multicultural, multidiversible space. And I still want that to take, uh, take place eventually. Um, and so I guess this is a record on time. So you guys will see this video and we can look back to see if it ever, you know, comes to full fruition if God intends it to. And yeah, um, that has been pretty much it currently. Um, just those are the things that are important that are passionate on my heart is creating a, a community, a real one, um, doing life with other women and us all coming as we are <clears throat> and really realizing who we are and as we are and not the filter, filtered way. So I hope I answered all those questions. We're already like 13 minutes in. So if you've hung out with me, I appreciate you. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna give you a big hug with my one hand because I'm still carrying my tea. Um, and yeah, if you like this video, give it a warm thumbs up, hit that red subscribe button. And until the next time, you have a wonderful day. I'll talk to you later. Bye.